Hello and welcome to the uh, Adorkable Anarchist World Episode 7. And you know what, I think I'm going to drop the whole episode thing after this, because, you know what, who, who really cares what number episode it is? So, um, today's episode delves into a topic that um, I didn't really want to get into until I was really comfortable around um, speaking in front of this webcam and everything, but I feel like I've sort of come around to it, so I think, I think it's about time for me to cover this topic. And originally I was just going to call this episode Culture, nothing more than artistic collectivization. But I found when, um, when building the idea for this whole thing, I found that um, culture is kind of the dirt foreground for the for what uh, what else I will talk about. And this is such a big topic that I don't think I can cover it all, but I will start off by um, telling you how this episode's idea came to be. Um, at work, me and my um, co-worker were talking about um, our romantic lives, and we both were able to... Um, we both had similar stories of culture, nationalism, and ethnicity playing a role in it and leading us to not getting the said person. And I think that's really sad, that the one thing that could divide people is um, is the fact that they don't come from the same place you do. And here I thought at the end of the day we were all human beings. Apparently that was never the case. Anyways, let's start this off. Okay, to start off, uh, the, the definition of culture. The arts and other manifestations of human intellectual achievement regarded collectively. Already off the bat, um, you should realize that that's pretty, that's not a good thing. Because really, the art was created by the artist. Now, people can come together and, um, and create art as a group, but that's the only time I think you could refer to it as something collectively is um, those people who are involved in it. And it makes no sense for me for, um, for like, let's, that, this is just an example here, for like Italy taking um, full, um, full credibility from Michelangelo's or Da Vinci's work. No, they did not, you cannot take credibility for them because the nation is not a people. Just because you're from the same general country area doesn't mean that you can take credit for the work of someone else. It was their work. Heck, Da Vinci's work is in France, I'm pretty sure, if I'm not um, mistaken. I may be wrong on that, but but still, it makes no sense to me that you would want to refer to someone's work as a collective achievement. I mean, I love um, I love the words of the works of Voltaire but I rarely hear anyone refer to his work as a cultural achievement. So I, I just want to say this too before I go on. Not all culture can be bad. Um, it depends on how you define the word, but what it comes out to in the modern day, it is merely an artistic fog for collectivization. If anything, um, I, I'd like to encourage the Terence McKenna view on um, on art, that that art really is um, not art, culture. Um, that culture today is the enemy, and that we shouldn't be going out of our way to follow other people's culture that has been preset in front of us. The cultures of Hollywood and the National Film Association, of the artistic people thrown in front of us. No, we should go and create our own culture. We should. Um, we should, as individuals, create more. And today we try to paint the world in black and white with our culture. As in, everyone on this side is good, everyone on this side is bad. And I... Here, I'm going to try and paint a picture to show you how this is exactly the case. Here in America, our culture has made it okay that we can criticize human rights in places like China or Russia. But we cannot, because of our cultural standings today, we cannot criticize human rights in places like, the, like Israel. So we try to paint the world in this black and white image that everyone on our side is good and everyone on their side is bad. 
And we try our best to influence this through the arts, through movies, through TV shows. I mean, heck, literally one of the most famous films today is a complete propaganda film. I don't know if any of you have seen The Purge, but... <sighs> man. <laughs> but there's a lot of propaganda out there that we mistake for culture, and that's exactly what they want to do, want you to do. If anything, this... One of the books that I will eventually get around to is Propaganda by Edward Bernays, but um, I think his works definitely have a good um, have a good um, impact on what I'm talking about here. I'm actually pretty ashamed that I haven't re read this book before uh, this topic, so uh, who knows, maybe I'll eventually have to come back and recover this topic after reading the works of Bernays. And for those of you who don't know, Edward Bernays was uh, Sigmund Freud's nephew who pretty much wrote the book on propaganda, and a lot of his works were used here in America for exactly those purposes. But... And, you know, another thing that um, has really played a role in the culture is this idea of um, teams. And it's like our flag good, their, their flag bad. Like, literally, just because there's a flag above you, it covers everyone who's in this general area. But you, you think I, I hang that flag up there to show that I am representing a group of people? No, I'm putting it up there because that flag represents myself. It represents what I believe as an individual. People will hang the American flag, however, because it's, because it's a symbol of them collectively. And to me, that never made sense. When I was young, I used, to, I used to raise the American flag every morning on the flagpole and fold it uh, at, at, after school so that only the stripes would show. I mean, so only the stars could show. Since waking up since then, I have um, folded every American flag I, ha I have ever gotten, the one that I have back there, with only the stripes showing to show that I am on the countercultural side of... Um, this culture war, which that's, that's another problem. A lot of people will look at the culture war as um, as a as a two-sided fiasco, and I don't understand why. Like, um, I don't know if anyone has ever listened to the song "Same Thing" by um, oh God, if I can remember what this group's name. It's a friend of mine showed me this song. Flowbots. Um, it's by the Flowbots. You might run out of that horrible song, I Could Ride My Bike With No Handlebars. But um, this song kind of paints a picture of um, the culture war being two-sided. As in, on one side you have America and everything that's us, but on the other side you have Hugo Chavez and all these other world leaders who are, they try to portray as champions of the people, but they are still statists. They are still authoritarian, hierarchical, with no other words to say it, assholes. They still rule people. They're no different than them. They're just two farmers that have had disputes over something. The cattle are the same on both sides. The farmers just have their differences. And I think I've brought that up in past episodes, that that's essentially what war is. Two pe a bunch of rich people having gripes and sending poor people to die for them. And to go back to the flag, our country today manifests itself in nationalism and hierarchical beings. Both political, as I was just explaining in, in, the, in the national sense, and in the religious, spiritual sense. Because we crave this hierarchical being constantly above us. And recently I had two young um, Mormon girls come and try and preach to my deist friend and I. Um, on the 4th of July, actually, at the downtown. Which I'm going to start bringing my camera to those things and do those man-on-the-street videos, so keep an eye out for those on my other channel. But um, So they asked me what my faith was, and I, I, I didn't know what to say. I, I ended up telling them I was a Taoist, but really I don't want to say that's true, because um, while there are many things of Taoism that I do take, um, I'm not a complete Taoist. And it's it, what I took from that was that People crave to be dominated in the spiritual realm just as they crave to be dominated in this political realm. And 
another thing I noticed is slowly anarchism is rising, which by the way, Mike, I'm sorry I couldn't get the Anarchy Rising video on that time, but um, anarchy is rising slowly. The more and more people I talk to day to day, the more and more people are waking up. The more and more people are realizing we don't need rulers, we don't need this hierarchy. Now then, certain ones will still go to the um, spiritual hierarchy, but they will all have their different ways of defining that, just as in our own individual realm, we define our outlooks differently as well. And if anything, with the idea of spiritual hierarchy of culture, I can respect the deist views. I can respect Gnostic views. I can even respect a good amount of Christian views. I cannot respect these very fundamentalist, hardcore, Bible-thumping views. I mean, just recently, um, this plays into what I'm going to talk to in a few seconds, talk about in a few seconds, but um, my sister uh, came out to my grandparents as an atheist, and um, they are very hardcore, traditional Catholic family, and they did not take to that very, very well. Um, she got the silent tra treatment for quite a few days, I do know that. I don't know what else happened to my... She wouldn't tell me the full story. Apparently there was some arguing, though. But to continue where I left off, culture does nothing more but makes slaves of people of this tradition. And that can be proven here, is you have many people on my one side of the family who stay within the Polish blood. Like how my dad's side of the family is 100% Polish. Nothing from that side comes from anywhere else, and they stay, stick with the traditions of Catholicism and of the old country. And for me, that has never been uh, something for me. If anything, I have thought that uh, that idea is ridiculous to stick to the tra traditions of old. And obeying a set principles of dead men is just preserving the old. In the words of Doug Stanhope, Oh, it's not mine. They threw that ball to me. We'll throw it back. Because if you're, pre if you're preserving the traditions of old, you are laying no foundation for the future for those who will come after you. It's laying no foundation for you in the now. It is doing nothing but preventing you from truly living your life to the fullest. And another thing is, um, these ideas of nationalism, they, their goals are to keep some ideas in and other ideas out. And you keep ideas that will shatter the real, bring, bring realizations to those who are under you. You want to keep those ideas out because you don't want the people who are under you to wake up. You want them to continue the tradition to to build up the culture that you have already been manifesting. You don't want your ideas to die, and yet that is one thing that we as humans can't understand. We all want to be remembered on this earth for something. But the truth is, at the end of the day, we'll all eventually end up being forgotten. Sure, certain things of yours will be remembered in the immediate future, but how will it be remembered in the far-off future? What happens if we go through another Dark Ages? After all, the world's going to complete shit right now. What if a new Dark Ages were to happen tomorrow? So many people would be forgotten. Very few would be remembered. And that's where I think we need to write more, is because today our culture has bred us to hate reading. I mean, hell, I went on Facebook and there's actually a Facebook page called Not Liking Reading or something like that. And there's a saying I've always had with people who I meet who love to read or I give books to. People all say that they want to evolve. They want humanity to evolve to something greater. But you can't have an evolution, so you have a revolution. But you can't have that revolution until you have an ideological awakening. But even then, you can't have that ideological awakening until people start to read more. And that's the problem. Our school systems today have... Uh, have trained us to despise reading, to see it as a boring activity, to see it as um, something that you don't want to do. 
Now, and I'm not one of those people saying that reading is the only good thing and movies and TV are bad as well. I think that they all bring their own little things to the table that make them unique. But I do think reading is just as important as the other ones, and I don't want to see this type of thing fade away. And it worries me when I talk to people and they say, oh, I don't like reading. Reading is terrible. If anything, I encourage more and more people to read. And that is the problem. One big problem with our culture today is it discourages reading. So now I'm going to dive into the part that um, has to deal with um, what I was talking about before with tradition, goes deeper into tradition, and how it prevents you from living your life to the fullest. And the way I can sum this up is, dare not venture to love ones outside of the ethnic blood. And now this delves into ethnicity, where this may get controversial. But I just want to make it clear right now, I do not look at ethnicity as a thing. I just look at us all as human beings. In the words of Dr. King, I do not judge people on the color of their skin or from their ethnic background I color, I color them. I, bleh, I, whew, I, do not, I do not judge people on the color of skin, but rather the content of their character. A little bit of tongue twister there. But you'd be amazed. Um, to reference this uh, story of my coworker, um, he was in love with a girl from Portugal. And he was with her for about two years because she was studying here in the States. But her uh, parents never didn't want her to marry anyone outside of the Portuguese blood. They wanted um, her to marry someone within it. And he eventually was fed up with this. He said, I can't do this anymore. I don't want to run from your family. So they broke up, and her parents ended up hooking her up with... Um, some Portuguese guy with a planet wedding. And the day of the wedding, the guy received a Dear John letter from one of the bridesmaids, and he ended up running off with one of them. And this just goes to show you can't follow these traditions or cultural... Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? You just can't follow these things, because they're not what you want. You shouldn't follow the preset destiny set in front of you by others. If anything, I think that has a lot to do with anarchism, too, because anarchism is very much so about doing what you love in life, finding meaning for yourself, and not finding meaning through those who brought you up. And I myself have my own story similar to this, but I'd rather not delve into that here. But the thing is, our problem today is if this is a very complex subject, and it is a lot more, it's a lot, the problem today goes a lot greater than culture. Yes, we have Hollywood trying to remain the cultural capital of America, trying to make sure that the independent artists, as the smaller guys, never really get out there. Which there's a lot of independent artists out there today who claim to be independent, but they aren't independent at all, they're just puppets. Culture is the foreground of nationalism for the seeds to grow. And nationalism enables these leaves of ethnicity to come out of it. All three will lie off of one another to keep younger generations enslaved and ignorant. To keep them following the traditions of old. To keep you, oh, it's tradition for us to, um, we are traditionally conservative people. So we are conservatives, so we will vote for the Republican Party. <laughs> the ideas of tradition go beyond politics and religion and ethnicity, in a sense. Because no matter what, they all eventually come down to one individual living vicariously through other individuals. And this is such a complex topic that maybe I didn't get it all over my head um, trying to do this on here. Which I hope my one viewer from the NSA is enjoying this episode. No matter where you live, we are all human. And this is a fundamental anarchist idea that feeds into the idea that there should be no borders. That borders are nothing more than illusions. So here's my question. If there were no borders, if nationalism was not an issue, would ethnicity still be a thing? 
or could we start to look at each other as equal human beings who live on the same planet? Not looking at us from, oh, we're from the same country. No, 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 not from the same county. That's a little bit different localization. But in essence, we are all human beings here on this, in our Pandora, Mother Earth. And so many people want to ignore that. People will go out of their way to make excuses to why borders should exist, why, why we need countries, why we can't look at ourselves as people, all hu beautiful, free, independent human beings living on one Earth, why it's better to look at us as united as a nation. But all of them eventually come back to just emotion and defending their cultural and traditional upbringings. If we were to look at the world as everyone as human beings, I don't think there would be any more wars. I think so many of our problems would cease to exist. And I guess this is where I come in more as a libertarian humanist, because I love the human race. Human beings, wow, well, we're actually growing viewers now, oh, this is the first, um, we're beautiful, free, independent human beings who are the alphas of our own destiny, and we can't be the alphas of our own destiny if we are following the traditions of old. If you are doing what you are doing only to make your family happy, you're not free. Like, I've met so many anarchists who are who are slaves to tradition, and it makes no sense to me. I'll explain to them, isn't anarchism supposed to be anti-tradition? And they'll say, oh, anarchism is only anti-certain traditions. <laughs> then what's the point of it being anti-tradition? It's like saying, well, anarchism is anti-culture. And then they'll say things like, anarchism is only anti-specific types of culture. But it's like, no, as far as I'm concerned, you oppose it all. You're, you're, all your chips are on the table. Or they're not at all. Which I know that sounds kind of absolutist, but that's kind of what the ideas of anarchism are. You're either free of tradition, the, the slavery of tradition, or you're a slave to it. You're either the statist or the anarchist. And I hope what I'm saying comes out well, because this is, this is an episode that has built up in my mind for a very, very long time. And culture it today is just nothing but slavery, as I've said. And I will say that at the time before this podcast will end. Culture is the enemy. Don't be a slave to culture. Don't don't follow these stars. Which what makes them so special? What have they done for the earth? What has Angelina and Joe Lee and Brad Pitt done that's been so wonderful for liberty and for freedom, for art? When was the last time they carved a, stat a great statue? When was the last time a wonderful indie film has ever made it into the Oscars? You see, our culture today doesn't want the independent artist, the free artist. So it's our job as libertarians to be those free artists, to be those ones who can carve a new, a new culture, but not a culture of collectivization, no, not one, where, not one where we take credit for one person, where we as a collective take credit for everything done by one person, no. One where we can cherish what the individual has done and enjoy their work. So if anyone out there actually has made it this far into the podcast, here's my challenge for you. I want you to find a version of art, any type of art, painting, drawing, whether it be painting, drawing, creating videos, being a stand-up comedian, I don't care. Any type of artistic flair that you have in you, I want you to find it. Because I know deep down we all have something that we're good with. And art is the best way of spreading a message. And I don't know if I've made this clear in the past, but I feel as though um, 
libertarianism lacks in the sense of art. And not to say that there aren't libertarian artists, I've seen plenty of great ones, but compared to those of the socialist ones I've met, we really are falling behind and we're losing this sense in the culture war. Well, I have five minutes to go, so um, I guess I'll talk about next week and what the plan is. Um, I'm going to try and get on the... I'm, I'm going to plan on doing another um, book review because the last one did so well for 1984. So um, this week I'm going to try and finish Gustav Le Bon's The Crowd. And if you're not familiar with this novel, it was the... Um, it's a crowd psychology novel written by French social psychologist Gustave Le Bon a long time ago. And it was the book that went on to give Hitler and Mussolini the tools they needed to gain social control. However, it has also given people like Dr. Martin Luther King the tools they have needed to make great change. And this book, I'm only one chapter in, but it is very, very fascinating. Just how social control works. And uh, I brought up Edward. Ber excuse me. I brought up Edward Bernays earlier. Bernays's work is just extensions of Gustave Le Bon's. So um, I'm hoping that we can find some interesting things out about Le Bon and his writings. And he actually mentions anarchism a few times. Strangely enough, that was one thing I did not expect when reading him. I expected him to be a fascist or a socialist or something along those lines or a communist. No, he, he mentions anarchism quite a few times in the introduction and the first chapter. So I was very pleased to read that. So hopefully we'll have that done by next week. And if not, one thing that I will be covering next week is something, is another topic that I could go on forever crit criticizing, and that is uh, schooling. Because, um, to give you a little bit of a sneak peek, I've been to every type of school you can think of. The only one that I haven't been to is um, homeschooling. That's the only one that I haven't done. Well, I hope that this has been a um, good episode to enlighten you about culture, ethnicity, and nationalism. I hope that um, this came out pretty good. And I hope that anyone out there can find a great artistic flair within them that hopefully we can see bloom into a beautiful flower. And until then, this is Mitchell Wiecek of the Adorable Anarchist World trying to remain optimistic in the age of imperialism. <laughs>